because I thought I heard a note of panic in the text, and you're like, <laughs> so he's coming here in person? <laughs> uh, so, well, the simple, the simple solution to that was getting in the car and driving down the office to grab the fourth set. Oh, that's where it was. I told myself yesterday at the office, get it, get the fourth fucking microphone, right? Because he, then you're covered if it ends up being a Discord or if he ends up showing up. Then of mm-hmm. course, oh, I'm picking him up. Fuck. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to another episode of the American Beer Review Podcast. Good times with good friends requires good beer. Lucky for us, we know how to pick all three. We're a group of friends who grew up in the Pacific Northwest, giving us a jump start on our craft beer journey. Join us today while Brian, Alec, and Chad review some beer, talk about beer topics, and whatever else comes up. We invite you to pour yourself a drink and hang out with us. Anyways, uh, yeah, I'm going to... I'm going to open a beer. Yeah. Let's start a beer, and then we should probably explain who we're talking explain to. Explain who we're talking to. So if you've been a listener to the podcast for any longer than the last two months, uh, we have back in studio the captain. Uh, my brother, we've referenced him over the last several episodes. Yes. But he is now come back out of the sunshine state. Well, that'd be Florida, but out of the warming, the- sunny San Diego and joining us the- in the... The beer mecca of San Diego, which I have personally mistaken for about, what, four or five different cities at this point? Yeah, and I think you've looped everything that's in California as being part of San Diego. Yeah, exactly. El Segundo's L.A. Yeah, that's L.A. Yeah. Not even even kind of San Diego. Diego? No. No. Okay. So what have you been up to? You know, check out. Whoa, whoa, hold on. We said we're drinking a beer, but we didn't say what beer we're drinking. Oh, let's... Yeah. Well, so Thor- how, okay. How about the two assholes have been making fun of me for my pronunciation skills? How about you guys say the beer first? <laughs> I can. I, I can say it. I. Uh, it. Let me pour one for. Yeah. So this is today. We're drinking. Uh, what's actually kind of one of the flagship beers now? I think of Georgetown Brewing. Yeah. Uh, Bodizafa. Yeah, it's their number one seller. Yeah. So they they came out originally with just Manny's, a pale ale. That was their mm-hmm. like go-to for the longest time. And then they had uh, Lucille. Lucille. And then Rogers. Rogers Pilsner. Yep. And then this one. And this started a movie Brian's never seen, but they're Point no, Break. No, I've seen, I've seen this one. You've seen the original Point Break or just the new one? I think the original one. Okay. I've seen it. I do Swayze? know this one. Yes. Okay. This one I do. I saw it. was a long time ago. So yeah, Bodie's Hoffa and then the Johnny Utah. Is their pale ale. Came out, yeah, after yeah. this one. Um, so it's a, they list as just an IPA, but it's a hazy IPA. Well, no, they, it's a darn tasty IPA. Well, true. Yes. Yes. I think all their stuff is darn tasty, but. Um, That's so fancy. And I appreciate the uh, keep it refrigerated because warm beer sucks. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The they game. get it. They get it. Do you guys remember being in high school and having to drink warm beer? I don't. No, because we. Didn't drink beer in high school. Yeah. No, college. I actually didn't. Yeah. I had my first beer at 21 years old at like 10 o'clock at night standing I was in Alex's say, living room. 21 and like... Almost 21 in a day. Yeah. I remember. <laughs> Neck of the beer bottle to your mouth. Going, what is this going to taste like? Ass. Absolute trash. It's going to taste... You literally you just you, looked at me, you're like, ass. It's going to taste you're like gonna, ass. You're going to hate it. Uh, what I don't hate is Bodie. No. Oh, this is good. Yeah. Have you had it before? Uh, somewhere along the way I would have had it, yeah. So, okay. I brought this because it's... A darn tasty IPA? Well, it follows the theme. I brought my favorite beer. I brought uh, my brother's favorite beer uh, with Irish Death. Uh, oh, I thought for... you meant Montucky Cold Snacks. Oh, uh, the Montucky Cold Snacks was one that he went, so I didn't bring Irish Death, but Montucky Cold Snacks. So, this is my one of my dad's go-to beers. Oh, yeah. So, if you're stopping at a convenience store and they don't have a full spread of beer, this is almost on... Uh, the shelf in every convenience store now because it's that mm-hmm. ubiquitous. Yeah, in in our general area, yes. it's, it's around everywhere. Um, Thor and uh, Kim, you got it poured out, so it's a nice, like, kind of orangey. Uh, yeah. uh, it's a nice flavor. Again, if being a light beer drinker, it's definitely not uh, not too strong in the IPA spectrum. Yeah, so it, it's it's bitter, but not like aggressively bitter. But then again, our sense of taste, being from the Pacific Northwest is we can take a li- little bit more bitter versus you go to, like, San Diego and the people down there and you give them a proper IPA and they go, Ew. wow, this is you. The oh. is like, 
yeah. you know, the stone or those kind of things, and they just like it's just a totally different palette. Yeah, we were talking about that on the way wild. here. That's interesting. Where people outside of the the Northwest go. Yeah, IPAs, not outside of the Northwest, but non beer drinkers outside of here. You were saying you experience people going IPAs just. No, this is terrible. Because even what I would consider one of the more bitter styles of IPA is the West Coast. Yeah, but but it's not just the West Coast. It is a it, it, the Pacific Northwest IPA is a bitter beer. Okay, like you go everywhere else, and they just I mean, especially when you travel internationally, and you try oh, to give yeah. them a, you try to give them a Pacific Northwest IPA. They look at you like, "What are you trying to feed me?" <laughs> now, that, being a light beer drinker, does everybody know my San Diego beer? Which one? Your go-to there? My go-to in San Diego. No. It is a craft beer. A Stone Buena Vesa. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's yeah. terrible. <laughs> it's not bad. No, it's terrible. I think I actually that's had That's the it one recently. you gave me? Probably. That it's... you that you introduced as, like, your favorite go-to beer? In San Diego, yeah. It's, my, it's, it's a... their, like, lime mm-hmm. lager. It's a, it's a, it's a Ooh. salted Ooh. lime lager. It's, Ooh, it's, yeah, it's, yeah, So yeah, it, yeah. It's, it's a uh, mm-hmm. San Diego take on a Mexican beer. Yeah, mm. No, absolutely not. You wouldn't yeah. like it either. No, how I've would had you it. like it? I've had you, it. I gave it a three point seven five on Untapped. Out of how many? Out of five. Out of five. But so that means you mar- that was like a like a C not, plus. Not great. Not terrible. Yeah, actually, it's it's my most common. That ranking is my most common. Like this is good. I will drink it again. Higher is like okay. Now we're talking. Lower is like meh to terrible. So it's. I mean, I also I can see I drink it sitting out in the sunshine. Uh, yeah, I, I, nope, I that one. So, <laughs> so I just Cam brought it right. And was you super like excited it? about it, and mm-mm. huh? Interesting. Mm-mm. Yeah, I don't. I don't. I, I'm a says fan. the one who drinks Bush Light. Well, I, you know, I, it's probably too fancy for you. Correct. Maybe it's too fancy for me, but for something to be so overhyped, like we brought Cabin Fever a few weeks ago for Thor, and it blew his mind. Yeah, I was expecting a mind blowing beer, and it was. It does look like they've rebranded that one, and maybe have a new version of it. So I don't know. We'll see. The flavor I like it. it. They have it in the can of the bottles. You can find it in uh, the. You can find it in twenty four. Is pretty, like I found it in uh, North Carolina once. Hmm. Um, so. Yeah. Before we move on, anything else about uh, Georgetown in this? Bodhi Zaffa. There you go. Well, got done. it. It only took like three weeks. Uh, it took three weeks of me standing in front of the refrigerator, <laughs> staring at these cans, practicing it. Yeah. Uh, in a uh, altered state, so it'd be imprinted on my mind. Um, yep. Not too shabby. Uh, the fun. Okay, so not the funny shabby. thing. <laughs> not too shabby. Not too shabby. Fantastic. I mean, six point nine. So it's right in there for an IPA. On the high end for just a regular, so a little yeah. boozy. But not okay. But not to review it. I have an. I have a not. I will not mention the name. Another high, hazy oh, IPA. Yeah. At seven percent versus this is six point nine. I can't tell you the difference between the hazy and the non hazy. Oh, is that because you're What's hazy? The other one you do you have the other ones? Or did you already put the can away? I don't know which one you were t- drinking. Well, I don't. I don't want to out them. No, that's fine. Um, but, uh, yeah, Bodhi to me is one that, of those. I mean, all, all I'm getting on the hazy. Uh-huh. Not to go down this road, but all I'm getting on the hazy versus this one because the color is almost the same, the booze is almost the same. You're just getting that soft wheat. Mm. I, I don't. This is this might get us canceled in the beer world, but why do why do we have to have hazy alongside oh, IPA? Oh come on now! Because I'm, I'm the, okay. So here's here's the problem with the hate. We got the hazy IPAs. We got the juicy yes, IPAs. Yes. Guess what? You have finite shelf space, and what yeah. brewers are finding now. Is they are going to have in order to get new fancy hazy IPAs or whatever the meta beer is that year, mm-hmm. we got to go to the nineteen point twos. We got to go to the singles, and guess what? Retailers hate doing adding SKUs. Oh, and yeah. when you come out mm-hmm. with brand new beer every year, um, you're forcing a retailer to add SKUs or a- or asking a distributor, "Hey, we need to add more SKUs to your line." Yeah. Uh, you're not going to be selling as many 12 packs because people want singles because people like the news article uh, Brian dropped this week, people are starting to drink less booze. So building the six pack, building the four pack out of the single section is great for the consumer. It's not for the, but uh, for 
distributors uh, and for distributors stores, yeah, and retailers small. and planning it's shitty well so there's a few things that one a lot of one when you scan them like on untapped like if i scanned Bodie's off i might get like three it's this is a regular beer but any of those seasonal ones they just put them under the same scan because they're never like overlapping because they're one-offs are doing those things so they just put them all under the same scan Somebody else I was listening to said, like, if you're going to add new ones, you got to, like, take away two old ones, too. Like, just removing them and replacing them. So, I don't know. You were going to say something? Is my Keystone Light 30-pack going away? No. no. No chance. No. As long as that's okay. As long as that isn't going away, we're no. good to go. No. All right. The, the macro aisle, I think, is firmly going to be planted in the big uh, big packs. Uh, and they've gone, the insider information, they're moving away from innovation. The big ones? What on do you the, mean on the by macro? that? Yeah. Uh, you're going to see a lot of consolidation from, especially like the Seltzers, they're going to streamline back to the mm, core mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. brands, and they're focusing this year on the core assortment and the things that move. I mean, it makes sense. Uh, it's of, not what they've done. <clears throat> the the well, innovative isn't what they've done well. No, well, because you think uh, the big one that I'm thinking of is the Bud Next. Oh yeah. yeah, had a multi-million dollar uh, Super Bowl commercial. I think I had that one. Was you would have had to have found it within two weeks because that was dead in the water. Really? Before. Yeah, it was day. It was DOA almost. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, within a month, it was getting deleted and pulled from store shelves. So yep, I had it. They're not this year. They're not focusing on innovation. They're not focusing on. I mean, I'm sure there's still something, but it's. Leaning into the core, getting back that uh, uh, primary beer drinker and not getting creative and fancy and winning shelf space back. Because if you can get two facings of something that sells, you can get two facings of Bud Light versus a facing of Bud Light and Bud Light Next or whatever that isn't going to sell, you're going to drive more units uh, leaning into into your core. Exactly. Well, and like uh, at my store, you had Bud Light. The after Bud Light next, but you had Bud Light, then you had um, all the Bud Light seltzers, mm. yep. and the Bud Light sel- the Bud Light section stayed the same, but instead of being four, you'd have like a four thirty bombs of right. Bud Light. Now it's just two thirty bombs of Bud Light, and the rest of seltzer. The right. seltzer ain't moving. No, the Bud Light's anymore. moving. It's playoff football season. Yep. My store was almost damn near out of Bud Light, but full of Bud Seltzer, yeah. and I know they're kicking themselves, going, "Wait, we need to get." But Bud Light's probably stuck on a whole bunch of seltzer, so they got to get rid of it and get back to what they do best. I think what COVID taught everybody is, yes, it's a boom time, but it's a boom time. But so we should focus on the core instead of chasing the seltzer unicorn or right everybody chased a whole bunch of shit while well the seltzers exploded that season it was ridiculous you couldn't get enough and then we just saw it as an utter collapse uh in that market and the ones that are moving still are i say are the core ones still moving though (gasps) like it's just quite quite gone truly yeah and then uh for bud they're seeing the it'll be out next but it's their higher octane ones so they're going to shift away from mm. Bud Light seltzers, and they're going to go into Bud Platinum seltzers. Oh my! God. Because, it, but because it's got a higher. But nobody's alcohol. really going after that right now, other because than the ready to uh, drink cocktail guys. White Claw has like a surge. I it, feel like, that's, those are the ones. Which is like eight percent. Those are the ones that are picking up. Yeah. Uh, but I think less and less. It's. I feel like that's a captain one right there. Eight percent. It's a tall one usually. Like we gotta be a tall boy. A tall boy. <laughs> I don't want it. <laughs> But you know, you think think about all the seltzers. I mean, uh, so Truly's owned by Sam Adams, Boston Beer Company. Yeah, Boston yeah. Beer Company. I mean, even they had a multi million dollar write off of the seltzers last year. Yeah, because they overbought it and overproduced it. And well, and they like you were saying earlier, they spread off into all these like weird, random, different flavors. Yep. And going, oh, we need more flavor, we, and it, and they're just kind of like refocusing. I think. When people say like, "Oh, seltzer's dead," like I think that's an over exaggeration. I think there's still a market for it. It's just not the market of every brewery has its own seltzer and every seltzer place has 42 different flavors. I just don't think that's feasible anymore. Right. But I I still think that seltzer's something that's like happening. 
but I wonder also like not just with seltzer, but you also have like RTDs. Like you, uh, who was I with recently? And they brought a collection of drinks that they'd had, and they brought in High Noon, which is like a vodka based. Like yeah, it kind of yeah. drinks like a seltzer, but it's vodka based. But there's a big one in San Diego. They cut water. Oh, cut water. Yeah, big time. Yeah. Cut big water cat. spirits. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I buy that, but I end up drinking Mikey Stone Light. Shocking. <laughs> Shocking I know. Shocking. <laughs> but they're good. Everybody, everybody loves them. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Well, and then so to pile on to the uh, streamlining of offerings, mm-hmm. does that play into um, since input costs have been increasing? I'm thinking mainly on the on the beer ingredient side, it's because fuel has been up and you have to have, you got to fuel your tractors to harvest the barley, harvest the hops, deliver it to wherever it needs to go. That's probably a big chunk of it. And then additionally, there's probably more demand, like we said, because everyone's doing hazy IPAs. So everyone needs to start buying wheat because every, a, a, lot, a, a lot of, yeah. So a lot of that, like we had covered that a couple episodes ago, but. Um, one of our articles was saying uh, one brewery, uh, a not named brewery up here, it was a local news report, said oh. their inputs went up 40%. And my alarm bells went off like going, I, I could maybe see it, but like my inputs, peak of COVID, maybe not even close to that. I don't want to say it exactly, but at the 40 seems like a re- ridiculous number well and i have problems with that article i was reading it this morning they were talking about the what they they kept calling it the largest craft brewer in the state and talking about the cost went up they never never mentioned the brewery nobody went on record to say it so so i'm like my 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 bs alarm was going up a little bit that's what i'm like it just seems like one of those i'm sure costs are going up when they claim it's 40 percent or those types of things and you're not like I know that there's things as like unnamed sources and it's there, fine. There, there could be a short like, term increase of forty percent. Yeah, like a one off. It also just it just screams out one of those of like, like the world is ending type of articles. Yeah, just to get the clicks or to get people up in arms or doing something. Well, uh, did, did they have the was labor in their input costs or not? They that just, that, uh, they, that they, the problem, they they yeah. need they needed a headline to sell and then they yeah. talked to a bottle shop guy and it, yeah, he went, oh yeah, you know. Uh, one or two bucks, but one or two bucks over a six pack, yes, twelve bucks. But yeah. like you said, le- people aren't going out to grab a twelve pack of craft beer anymore as no. much as they used no. to. You go grab a big pack of macro or a variety or, pack, or you're but or you're building a six pack. And this guy said, yeah, if you're picking a two dollar two ninety nine uh, can to go into six pack, that's not as big a sticker shock if you're going to go reach for a twenty dollar. Right. right. Uh artisanal six pack or a twenty dollar uh everyday IPA mixed twelve pack. Well yeah. and that's where we've seen a little bit and I think we'll see over the next year um for sure is uh a re expansion into the nineteen point twos mm-hmm. and into the singles. Cause yes, if somebody's gonna buy today's example of Bodhi's Zaffa, that six pack might be out of price range. Usually, or not out of price range, but just the sticker shock. But you eleven ninety nine, twelve ninety nine. But I can get a can for three bucks. Yeah. Uh, so that's my fancy beer. I like. And then, tall boy, tall tall boy. Right, and that's where I think we're also why we're also seeing the shift into the higher octane uh, for like the seltzers and things like that. For the other side is going well. If I'm only gonna have one. Uh, yeah. Well, and because that's the thing is we sit in a time where we're all talking like not we all but like a lot of us talking about like. Uh, oh, getting into NA, getting into lower calorie, but some of the highest like um, like growth in sales is the new um, New Belgium line. They keep doing these like Imperial like Voodoo Ranger styles, right? And it's the Imperials that keep being that like that go to next one that's the top seller, and they just keep making them. Like they have like. Six or seven different of just mm-hmm. imperial types. It so one of the articles you sent us where they were talking about um, that they were talking to a beer consultant company. I went down a rabbit hole, hopped on a oh, podcast. The Bump Williams, yeah. Uh, so yeah. I, they they were on the uh, uh, I think it was the Beerus podcast. Uh, 
him and a couple of folks were on and they were talking about it and they're talking about it nationally. They just, all you heard was Voodoo Ranger, Voodoo Ranger. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Voodoo Ranger is one of those beers like we had talked about Black Raven. I have always walked by Voodoo Ranger in yeah. the beer aisle. I have never picked up a Voodoo Ranger. <sighs> but I, but I've seen that slice. It, this used to be the Voodoo Ranger, the right. skull in the, in the astronaut outfit or something yeah. like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. But I've just seen it slowly. Now there is just a Voodoo Ranger end cap at the craft aisle. Right. And I've never went and grabbed it, but why not? They're they're doing something that works, and then yeah, and I barely see any fat tire. It's just Voodoo Ranger. I well, I, because I have it's to venture somewhere to find fat tire now. What it's selling, and so I don't buy it, but I've had it bought for me, like as gifts or hey, someone brings it or it's at someone's house. But Is that I've never because they buy it. sold out, and you no longer oh, consider them craft. So yes and no. Do you know? Do you know why? <laughs> I think part of it, I could see that, yes. But do you know why I actually, there may be one of the ones that I'm not mad about them okay. in the sellout? And well, we've said, if Isn't somebody the- if somebody comes to me and they're going to offer me like, you know, hey, we're going to buy your company for $300 million, like, cool. Yeah. Like, where do I sign? Yep. Um, w- with New Belgium, they, um, the ownership took them into like, a, I forget the acronym for it, but it's like an employee-owned right. Like company, so like they changed it from being private equity basically, and they made it into like a uh, like employees a get all the stock and like right, so they right. can they're like the voting thing, and it was like within months. Esop. Yes, thank you. Oh, within months, it sold out. The employees all did, were like voted to. Yeah, we're selling because they saw like immediate return potential of right. like. Oh, we have this access and someone's willing to do that. Like, so they sold out immediately. Yeah. So like that one, I'm like, at least, Hey, I mean, not only did the owner get paid when they, you know, probably were part of it, but like everybody got paid. Yeah, Matt, that's gotta be just a headache and a half to staff after that point going, Oh, Hey, production line guy who just <laughs> got paid out hundreds of thousands of dollars or whatever you made. Yeah. I still need you to show up for work on Monday. Yeah. Can uh, and, and can, can all of these. <clears throat> well, and you did it. You brought up Fat Tire. You worked your you worked it in there. So, do we need to talk about this? Will be the last one before we get back to. It. I interrupted uh, the captain talking about catching us up on his life because uh, I wanted to talk <laughs> about Bodie's Zaffa, and that was like thirty five minutes ago. Um, but you brought you brought in you you worked your way to Fat Tire. What happened yes. with Fat Tire? Oh man. Uh, <laughs> What are your thoughts I know, on okay, it? I know we're doing a little bit of new. We, we've been kind of mixing news in early. Yeah. Um, but they did a low. So apparently they did a logo redesign. <laughs> I didn't know. Yeah. But I, but I found out all over the course of two uh, news articles. Mm-hmm. And I, one of the news articles said they basically changed their logo without telling anybody. So, Which, whatever. so Bottle Shop started getting like new things and they're like, uh, what is this? This doesn't look like fat tire because they changed it completely. They went away oh, it's from a, that yeah. like watercolor uh, kind of label. Yeah. It's well, a f- it. It's fucking Miller Light. They made the Miller Light can their own. That that's what it is. That aggressive. I, you I'm can't. No. Up. Oh no. You can't unsee it. If you go, you go look at that and tell me that's not a Miller Light. Eh. I mean, oh, it's Miller Lite for sure. They knock off Miller Lite. We got we got the Miller Lite expert. That's I Miller think Lite. It's just a white can with blue. That's what's yeah and red, which is yeah. Miller Lite and a round logo. Yeah, yeah. It looks like it's, somebody who's trying to save on printing costs. Uh, it, yeah, exactly. And also that the, the six pack carrier there. Yeah, that's just that's a little bit of lack of inspiration. Well, and the, the heart of the six pack carrier is still like what their traditional is, with just then slapping the new logo across the front but, of it. Well, the I, other thing is, it's not, uh, it's no longer an amber. I saw that too. That was the Which, one that blew my mind, or not blew my mind, but was more interesting than the logo change. The logo change, companies mess up on yeah. those, whatever, or yeah. change them up all the time. The Mountain Dew, when they went to MTN, oh, oh yeah. yeah, whatever was, but it, whatever, it, that's fine. Yeah, they changed the entire style of the beer. Yeah, it's basically now categorized as a golden ale. Right. It just doesn't feel like. Okay, so I, f- I feel for I, – I, I don't want to dump on the logo guy because I know the the art, people doing the art spent a whole shitload of time. I appreciate that. So I when mean, we 
we did our re- logo redesign. I was going to say, how many iterations of our logo when we only changed the like, colors primarily? Did 48. You... Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but my fav- my top three favorite ones, we could not move forward with because they look like fucking Miller Lite. So yeah, it, yeah. it was like, I, there's something about that Miller Lite logo that is just so perfect for beer. I, I can't, there's an umami. I can't put my finger on it, but when you see it, you see it. Yeah. And I unintentionally... Just made the same I di- thing. I diverged into it and I stared and looked at it. I'm like, what's wrong with this? And then I go look at me and I'm like, oh, god damn it. Okay, right. we can't use that. But yeah. thankfully, you two picked a non Miller Lite looking logo that we could switch to that we moved out to. I got down to where like I picked a few and then I had to, like, I asked my wife to be like, okay, which one now? Because I can't decide from there. So, all right. So, anything else on Fat Tire before? No, I, mean, I think I'm, that I think we've thoroughly whipped them I've, about that. Fat I mean, tires. I feel like I, I was actually, oh, I was actually listening to one of our podcasts. Yeah, I know it's shocking. You, what? you sent that out. Yeah, I. Um, you, you threw like episode eight now. Uh, I'm in almost near the end of nine. Man, that's <laughs> why our download numbers are getting up there on those older episodes. Um, but I was talking about Fat Tire in one of them, and I'd had it somewhere. It must have been like at a party or something. But and it was it's fun. I've I've never had a problem with fat tire. No, it's just again like it's an it's one of those you so, go eye blind to it in beer aisle. When there's so many other options that are out there, right? Like I have a bad habit of of not buying the same thing over and over. Right. Like there's the few that I will like. I will like every when I'm talking about craft beer, not your yes. Um, every. As the captain's drinking Rainier. his third Ranier for the day. Um, a f- every few like months, I always get at least a new six pack. Or but you're back home, you got to have a Ranier or the four. You have to have a it's sixteen ounce Ranier, by the way. Or the four pack of Tall Boys of Irish Stats. But I'll always yes. get a new one every few months. Um, so there's a few of those that I'll do it, but usually it's like I'm always trying to get something new. So if you get me to buy it two or three times, it's been a pretty good routine. But like. Fat Tire just isn't one of those I've done it before, but I, I'll if I see the new one, I'll buy it and check it out, see what I, uh, I come up with. I buy it for my dad all the time. Fat Tire? Yeah. Yeah, that's one of his go-tos as well. Well, but if they've changed it, maybe not. But uh, maybe that's why it's be... still sitting in the fridge. He doesn't know what it is anymore. Probably. He might think it's a oh, does he have the new one? Miller Lite, and he's not going to drink that. He's looking for the fancy beer. He probably thinks it's a bush for us. Yeah, I did. Well, we I didn't see. Did, will Fat Tire do the bottles anymore? Because they, I, the, new, the new thing was in a can. It's still, it showed the can and the okay. bottles. Okay, but I think they'll phase it out because they're one of those. Comp- they're, I think they did the B Corp thing, and they are very, oh. they are being very aggressive on their um, environmental goals. I could see them phasing out the glass bottle because something we didn't touch on. Uh, I think it was a few ago, a few episodes ago, we talked about um, CO two costs in the getting mm-hmm. beer right. places. Glass is like obscenely heavier than yeah. aluminum to transport. So yeah, part of what like we kind of theorize people were home brewers and then they were craft brewers two years later. That's why they're doing glass. Mm-hmm. I think the real driver was glass is really expensive to ship because yeah. it's heavy it's versus lost. versus the amount of volume of beer. So you're paying you're, you're yeah. paying more to ship the same you want a less amount yeah you want to spend the least amount of money shipping your packaging with your product in it as you can and yeah. shifting away from glass i think is going to be a big one but now what's interesting is when you go to asia they're all about the glass but, because, but, because but again they recycle them properly so you walk into any restaurant in asia outside the front door is there's stacks of crates of the glass from the night before mm. so you have a nice cost or a whatever yeah. in, in korea they, they, they open it, you drink it, they don't throw it away, they don't recycle, they literally put it back in a thing, it mm-hmm. goes back to the brewery, and they, ref- and they cl- obviously clean it and refill it, but it's, they've got that that uh, cyc- cyclical business figured a little bit better, where they're not just, they're not saying it to a third party recycling, well, let's see what happens, but they actually just reuse the bottle. Well, and that's where yeah. we talked about, I think last episode with the pack techs. Oh, yeah. Is breaking it down, recycling them. Costs a ton of money. Glass you can, but it's not super efficient, especially when it's mixed to recycle. Yeah. But if you're just cleaning and reusing, like that's, and I think that's where a lot of the home brewers, because that's yeah what we did. Because you're, you're keeping it super low, and you're not worried about shipping that glass. But yeah, when you're shipping else. it out, uh, the added cost, the breakage, all yeah. of that. S- some people were actually looking at, um, uh. 
like how the soda fountains have the concentrated syrup. Yeah. Some people are looking into oh. shipping their beer that way. Whoa. That was a oh. weird one we didn't get into, but that, that is an interesting, because if they get that dialed in, all of a sudden, That's the weird. Soda Stream folks, yeah. you'd be able just to buy the, the Bud Light syrup, and you put it in and make Bud Light yourself Carbonate it in your yeah. Yeah, kitchen. That's freaking weird. I, I mean, or have on-demand beer dispenser in your kitchen. I mean that that huh. I think that's that's a that's a ten fifteen year goal. No, but that, I think well, that is definitely I, I something being. I don't think it's that far out. I think it's closer than that. No. Well, huh. I, 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 yeah, I think the early adopters, a couple of years, but I think ten fifteen years that could be just a that be a normal way you buy beer now. Hmm. Anyways, yeah, we have somebody <laughs> yeah. here who has been uh, doing a little bit of wandering. I know he's like, oh, oh when I was in Asia, when I was in North I Carolina, travel. oh, I travel. San Diego, I travel. <laughs> I travel. I think we have a uh, corresponding beer to review. Oh yeah, for I those who I, wander, yeah, that's a good call. Lose. Nice segue. Yeah, I actually left it in the fridge though. My bad. I realized it like ten minutes ago. So uh, let's take a we'll take a little pause. Clip oh pause. yeah, that sounds good. Yeah. Let's take a quick break here. Yeah. All right, uh, we're back here. So, like we said, talking about travels, uh, the beer we have today to actually review is uh, from one of my top breweries in Bellingham, Wander Brewing. This is, I think they kind of do it seasonally. I don't think this is a year-round offering, but it's a beer called Shiny Objects. Yeah, it, on the website they said... Uh... So 2022's offering for Wander is this kind of a so oh the, this version of it yeah. you mean yeah it's kind of yeah. so every year there's a little bit, little tweak to it I I I like that ha- having that, that you can consistently go find the beer and there's a little bit different kind of like the Trader Joe's uh oh yeah holiday ale like kind you know you're always gonna yeah. be able to get this one at some point yeah but it's going to be maybe a slight different variation. And there's something you're looking forward to every year. Like, Ooh, what'd they change this year? Or can I remember it? We have another year? one. Just you can pour some out of mine if you need to. So this is a, um, they call it a juicy double IPA. Um, yeah. So juicy. When you talk about the 2022 tradition, they, uh, or iteration, they're talking about a few different, um, Different types of hops that they're using. Oh. So, uh, one of the flavors that they're talking about will be in here is uh, luscious, root? luscious pineapple. Oh. Okay. Uh, and dank banana runt resin. Is, it bel- is that yeast? Is I think that I the- want either of those things in my mouth. So, what it makes me wonder is, do they mean like the runts, like the candy? Ooh, there you go. I'm yeah, that. I think so. Because that banana flavor is is its own distinct banana flavor. I think, like not like no banana yeah, yeah, runs. No, they are talking about the banana runs. Are different I get than I get the it. banana. I'm getting it. Huh? Yeah. It it's hiding in the way back after the sip. Well, also, you know why they don't taste like bananas, right? Because they're not like they're not real. Like I don't like I don't know what you're trying to say. Like it's candy. Like no, I get that. So they. Bananas, uh, as a species, we've bred them down to be so specific and taste all the same. Oh. That they're super susceptible to uh, diseases. So the bananas, up until like the 60s, were an entirely different species of banana. And then they went extinct and all got wiped out. And we replaced them with the current, I think it's the Longfellow banana that we eat today. Yeah. Uh, so it's an entirely separate banana with a different flavor. So the banana taste in like a runt or in the candy was modeled on the previous iteration of bananas that we yeah. had. Yeah, wasn't it the Cavendish banana? I think so. What, was it, it, it was either some, the something one, like that. One way around. It was yeah. either the Cavendish. Are we, are we the only ones that I, don't know this bananas? Is, this is absolutely news to me. Right. So. <laughs> well, because for our entire lives, it's been our current. <laughs> yeah, this is the current iteration of banana. For we'll, us. we'll have to fix it in post. But yeah, it's either the Cavendish or the Longfellow we have fix right it now. In no, we're not. Post. We're not. No, no, we're not. <laughs> one of them was our parents ate them all the way up. They were a lot shorter, whatever, narrower, but different flavor profile. And then they got wiped out. And so all of the banana farmers had to find something else that didn't get uh, hit with it. And this they switched is blowing to my the mind. Give me a beer. Uh, yeah. So interesting thing in this beer. Yes. 
So your pour is from top of the can. Yeah. Right? And mine is from oh, the bottom. bottom of the can. So is mine. Yeah. yeah. And the color difference between so, the two is... Yeah, let's talk about that. So one of the things that's happening, it depends on... Um, sometimes the brews will state it. And they'll talk about whether basically the um, beers are kind of like... I forget the exact phrasing, but like live... Like a... Uh, like bottle conditioned. Right. Okay. So okay. that there still is like that little bit of live yeast in there that like helps to do it. And so usually when you get to some of the like um, more hazy beers, they'll actually tell you like. Give it a flip and a twist. Don't. No. Oh. Don't pour the entire can. Mm. Oh. Like don't drain to the bottom because you're actually kind of dumping in some of that like. Sediment. Mm. Sediment and stuff that's in there. And I have found that a lot with, um, and maybe it's like more unfiltered styles mm-hmm. that it could be um, where the same kind of thing happens that as you pour and you hit that last little bit, you really notice a change in the, like the flavor, color, color, no, yeah. but like the color and the consistency almost of it. But this one is not, um, not what we'd call hazy. Um, it's certainly not like super clear, but it's not like a hazy style beer. Um, I mean, mine. My, yours though my, my, could almost be hazy, but yeah, the first, but, the first two pours. But also hazy is. I'm not getting that heavy wheat mouth. mouth th- and that's like what I. Hazy. That's what I mean. Yeah. I think like also when I hazy. say that is like think of like the ones that are bright orange and like mm-hmm. opaque. Like you're you're getting orange juice. Like that's a traditional like real thick hazy. That's why even Bodhi is not hazy in the like overt juice bomb of a beer. So, how are we feeling about uh, shiny objects? So, what makes a triple a triple? Mm. Triple? Do you mean a triple or a tripel? Uh, what do they call this thing? A triple? No, this, no, this is a double. Is double, double IPA. Okay, well, then double what's, IPA. makes it a double. Double double IPAs are you're ramping up the um, both the malt and the hops, hops that you're doing it. So it's a, it, boo- it's not, it's a boozy IPA. It's not a real like. Um, it's not double twice in the, the fact alcohol, that yeah, yeah. and it's not it's not like twice the hops or twice the malt, but you're basically like overdoing all those things. Alexa, shut up. <laughs> um, so it's just kind of overdoing that stuff, but that part of that leads to the booziness because you're adding in way more malts and things to it. So, so it's not quite an ice. It is not an ice. Uh, ice is completely different process for so it. Completely different process, but at eight percent alcohol wise. Yeah, it's it's higher not, than most. It's ice. still higher it's, than an ice, yeah. yeah. Um, but it, it, yeah, you don't go through the fraction like freezing. Some or the... some doubles you can see in the mid to high sevens. Yep. But usually doubles are in the eight percent range. Yeah. Maybe creeping up to a nine, but not really. And then you can also have triple IPAs, which the thing that I found is that when you double or triple for like a IPA, it actually cuts some of the bitterness down because there's so much malt that went yes. in there and yeah. so much yeah. yeah so like my wife before she was gluten free didn't like most IPAs but liked doubles or liked triples because it took that like bitter as she used to call it the pine salt taste out of the beer mm-hmm. and kind of mellowed them a little bit more yeah but it also is sometimes replaced with like a boozy the, uh, the booze, flavor yeah the booze is taking the hit off of the hops and then uh so i finished my uh taster of wander yeah it it is great light up front Mm -hmm. i'm catching the banana runts kind of on the tail end but then i'm getting like a a little getting that pine bitter at the end Mm -hmm. that i like on an ipa it's kind of like here's all the flavor and now here's a little bit of hops and this like this finishes the taste for you I think it drinks um, smoother than a lot of doubles. Like yes. I, that was a very that was very smooth. Yeah, I would uh, not have pegged this as a double IPA. Like I, an eight no. percent beer. Yeah. No, this is a smooth IPA. Yeah, uh, it's that, that runt flavor at the end is a little bit of a kick. Yeah, I, 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 I don't getting, think I don't think it's for everyone. You want to try it, uh, that that banana okay. runts? It's 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 the second it's the second bit in your tongue. Mm, it's yeah. that runt flavor. I'm getting a little it's, maybe of it in the nose. It's in the it's yeah, in there's the a little bit there. Yeah, so um, with it being that second taste in your tongue, with it being kind of like a, you getting it a little bit or no? A little bit. Usually, when I think banana flavor, I'm thinking like a Belgian or like a yeah, yeah. or a yeah. 
Okay, now there it is. No, it's a, it's a flavor inside the beer, not something imparted by the yeast. Yeah, um, is where is where you're looking for it. Yeah. One of the other favorite things. So Wander has uh, on this can. It's been the same logo, I think, for a few years. Okay. And uh, actually, my son was wearing a shirt variation of this yesterday. So what? they have a character. So they have a character that you can see on the can. It's just the shadow of him because he's in front of the deer moon. guy. It is a like a jackalope. Oh, okay. So oh, it's yeah. like a little guy with antlers. Mm-hmm. Um, but he's got like on my son's shirt. It's a little like almost kind of fuzzy raccoon looking guy with like a big fluffy tail. And so uh, the kids really kind of like it. So they actually do also a beer called um, One-Eyed or something like that. And it's that character with an eye patch because it's doing like a single hop hmm. variation oh, okay. of their beer. So it's kind of like their side like their mascot, if you will. But um, yeah, Wander's great. Um, if you've never been up there to Bellingham, they have a good spot. Uh, kind of a yeah, big. Where are they at? Because yeah, this they're is kind of by ones that I haven't hit. They're by Bellingham High School, um, over kind of by oh, the okay, Letter so down, Street downtown. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and they actually just opened a new spot that's further over towards um, the Columbia neighborhood. Okay. And like by Elizabeth Station. Um, bottle shop that they We're super specific super, super yeah. specific. I mean, I mean, no but it's called but yeah. it's called rome and it is a um tap room of their tap room and coffee shop and it's okay. got a completely different vibe than their main um their main tap room and, and brewery. Yeah, but, I'll put it on the list next time we're up there. Yeah so I just swing through and I think if we move our dudes trip this would definitely I, Oh be, yeah we do need to talk about that off air. Yeah. But um I somebody was talking about going to Bellingham um, and they were like, what do you recommend for breweries? Oh man, get a pen, pen and paper. Well, and so, but I, I was being kind. So I picked three. Okay. And to me, uh, the top three are structures, Aslan and Wander. Okay. And hitting like a variation of those three. You can add others. If it's I'm, summertime, Colshin's I mean, got a great. You skipped my favorite, but. Oh, uh, Boundary Bay. Yes. How do you, yes. How do you, how do you go to Bellingham and not go to Boundary Bay? The, I love Boundary Bay. Yeah. It's a restaurant to me. Okay. And I... I mean, their beer is in that one Hagen. What? That, their beer <laughs> is in that one Hagen. Cam's talking oh. about how hard it is to find. Oh, but yeah. yeah. Uh, I guess maybe that's where... Well, so obviously, love Boundary Bay, but that's where it's an easier sell for me. Yeah. Because when I'm up there, I'm not up there by myself on a dude's trip. I'm there with my wife and kids, and Boundary Bay is much easier than rolling into Which is a why brewery. Aslan... Where the restaurant is, Asl- Aslan is as easier well. compared to Aslan Depot, which is twenty one and over. So when we go okay. and it's just me and my wife, we can go sit in there and play some board games and sit in nice comfy chairs and hang out. So. Right. Um. But yeah. So, so uh, is that a thing? What going to a brewery and playing board games? Yeah. Well, my son, because our little brother was doing the same thing last night, and I had to go like party bomb their their, their board game session. Oh yeah. yeah. Well, now whenever I bring my son, we play a lot of Go Fish. Right now, so it's a good one. Real sophisticated, yeah. I like it. I like uh, it so, thoughts on shiny objects? Where you're placing it now? It is kind of seasonal. I was gonna say seasonal, and what's the availability outside of them? Well, where did you get this? Uh, this one was in waiting for me in my mother in law's fridge when I showed up for Christmas. So she okay. uh, can go to the brewery, and she has my brother in law buy it. When directly he goes there and get it yeah but um you can get it at bottle shops in the area like here pacific northwest um most bottle shops will have it when it's available seasonally like it's a pretty good it's it fit any of their distribution places almost always will have it you're probably not finding it at a fred meyer or at a safeway but bottle shops it's available pretty consistently when it's available seasonally and the seasonal is i mean assuming that we're it's uh, late, late fallish yeah. through. I think it's still available on tap there, so probably through early spring. Yeah, the, it is still on the tap list right now. Yeah, so late fall or, or winter ish through early spring. Um, it's a good beer. Mm-hmm. I don't have a spot in the fridge for it. Either fridge. Either fridge, um, oh. but since it is a seasonal, this is definitely uh, if I go to a party, 
or someone's house, I will I'll grab a four pack of them. Okay. Drop them off. Additionally, my family has this weird thing. We've all uh we put a cooler on the back porch when it's cold outside in the mm-hmm. winter. And that is the alternative fridge for the holidays. Yeah. I would keep this there. So you're throwing it in third fridge. I, I'm throwing it in the outside cooler during the winter since it is a seasonal. It's it's a good good taste, but it's just not it's just not hitting for me. Oh, yeah. th- this is a beer I would bring to my dad's house. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely for him. Like you maybe would have one, but mostly you're leaving it for him. <laughs> okay, sorry. As a normal person, not a you finished your glass. I did. It was it was nice. It was tasty. Okay, but no, I uh, yeah, I'd bring it over to him. My dad and I would uh, probably bring a six or right here for myself. Your dad would probably crush these. He would. Yeah. No. I, yeah. That's what I was. So I think this is for me a, a beer fridge. Uh, just yeah. With the double, the eight percent, and, and that's then... the only thing of it is like, yeah. for me, I'll have a couple beers tonight, but I'm having one of these. one of these. Uh, but I think, and that's where I was asking about availability because mm-hmm. I think this would be something cool. To hand out to either my dad or my youngest brother, who's a little bit more into that crafty mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. space, kind of shoes the uh, macros. So having a couple on hand, either to enjoy for myself every once in a while, or when they show up, you to hand out to, yeah. yeah something that they haven't seen before. Yeah. Um, so I'll put it uh, seasonally because that's when available in the in the beer fridge. Yeah, I get because it's seasonal. It's not just in my fridge all the time. Obviously. Uh, it became available at Wander, and my mother in law knew even to get it, or you know, knew right. that my brother in law was going to get it, and had her had him grab me some. So, I, I drink it every year, pretty much when it's around. So, hence why I'm the one who brought it. Cool. Well, uh, so I'm looking at the clock. Um, Maybe second uh, second time in a row we've kind of finished the review and we're kind of at our uh stopping point um so maybe next time we'll talk to cam well we've got plenty (laughs) we've got the day is young here maybe we just keep recording that is up for the listener to find out because yeah our glasses are empty hopefully yours are too see you next time Well, you know, some people want to see that, but not hey, all. Not hey, everybody. it's it's uh it's a uh, sour beer summer, hot boy summer. Dude, I, I think we uh, boys, belly shirt boys. We got to bring the belly. I've been, back. Belly I've shirt been summer. S- thank no, you. No, no, they weren't called belly shirts. They were called muscle shirts. Yes, but, ooh, 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 muscle shirt summer. <laughs>